Hello, welcome to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Walter Villa Gonzalo. He's the Labour DLP candidate for the Western Metropolitan Region. Welcome, Walter. Thank you again for having me. It's a pleasure. And um, you shared a lot the other time about your um, faith story. Mm. Um, how did you come to know of God's love through your conversion? Well, I loved myself first. Before I became a Christian, I thought you know, I, I was in control. And uh, having graduated from the military academy, we were like the elite in the country. Mm. A lot of people wanted to be like us. But uh, I thought it was all about me and all about our, 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 our group, right? And I, uh, I certainly had love for myself. So it was centered on me. When I became a Christian, I realized it was not about me. It's about God. Mm. And I, I saw that the more I realize about God's love for me, the more I am able to love others. And that love is shown by the way I relate to others. And I, I know that over the, the many years that I've been a Christian, People saw that, and I just see, I just take one day at a time, one issue at a time, and just be, I mean, show integrity and just do what God wants me to do. Mm -hmm. right? So uh, it's God's love. I I felt myself, and showing that love to others as well, right? And mm -hmm. practicing what I'm I'm, I'm preaching. I needed to be careful about what I, I, I say or what I do. And uh, I know that people around me, even people of non-Christian beliefs, they even ask me to, to pray for them. They, they understand it's, and, and it's not something that I would expect or I would know myself acting as. Mm. It was, I mean, I had, a, a, my life was changed. Mm. I know it was changed when I became a Christian, mm. and it it showed because if you have something inside, it will come out. That's beautiful. Right. Yes, so that, that, that's powerful, and it um, it is great that you also really not only experienced God's love, you you started doing community work once you got to know God's love. Well, as we said, uh, the Bible says it's you know faith without action is meaningless. Nothing. Yes. Yes. So, we ha we have to show that love. You have to to practice that love. Yes, because I I think um, there's been within the church there's been some uh, Christian groups that focus a lot on faith and not so much on service, and some so much service. But I think you're talking about having both. Well, yes, we can have all the training in the world. You can have well, you can have. Uh, uh, seminars or things like that on how to engage with the community but unless you really do it you can have your PhD in community service and <laughs> no action so in my case I prefer to, to do something to be out there and uh, I always love uh, working with people mm. so just being there helping no, uh, no intention or no interest in getting something in return just helping planting seeds planting seeds that's mm. just you know you get something back but it's not for the the purpose of i mean the reason why you're doing things it's not because you want you're expecting something back you're just doing it because you've got god's love in you mm, that's beautiful so you do yes um yeah you you do come across and i believe you are a humble man of god which is wonderful yeah. and and we do need great leaders and uh, i'm glad that you are um, trying to go tr to um, you're going to be a member of parliament hopefully um, in the coming elections well uh, it's oh, I just give it leave it in God's hand my plan is uh, 
nothing compared to the plan of God. So I tried it in the council election. I thought, uh, I, I, I believe this is what I, God wants me, and I, I wanted God's approval. First two elections that happened, so, uh, and it didn't work. But all in God's time, as I've said, I, I stood for election. The last three elections that I ran, I did not have any flyers, no campaigning, nothing, just leaving it there and just doing the work that I'm supposed to do in our community. Mm. And God honored that. So yes, that's I what think. I see this as happening in the state election as well. If it's God's plan, it will happen. I believe you've done uh, volunteer work for many years. More than 20 years, yes. And full and time. Continuing. Yep, and continuing, continuing as a counselor, that's what I'm still doing. Right. And you've got, got a good wife who's been supporting you financially. Yes, yes, very, uh, <laughs> very supportive wife. So that's maybe what, you know, second best thing that I, I had. Yes, first. is she thinking of being a politician too? No, no. <laughs> <laughs> the first three elections uh, in council, she was against it. I don't, I don't think she voted for me. <laughs> <laughs> so she brings in the bread and butter and you can do your dreams. Well, she's, she was the main uh, breadwinner of the family. She, she uh, uh, understand and very supportive as well. I mean, when we were in the Philippines, she was not working. I was the one uh, supporting the family. Mm. But this time she thought, she, she, she agreed that this is what mm. God wanted me to, to, to do. do. And so she took on, took on that uh, responsibility. Yes. But she did it very well. And maybe it's time for her to mm. retire as well. <laughs> yes. and, your, um, and you believe leadership is a service. Yes. Uh, my, my training has been in, as a leader. And if you, uh, uh, as a Christian, God gave me that skill. And I just used that, sk that sk skill uh, in the community where God put, put me. So I was president of the Filipino community. I was trade consul. I was you know, but just placed in that situation by God and who God uh, in, what, uh, ordained, he enables. Yes, so he, he mm. provides. He provides, yeah. yes. Mm. On that note, we'll go for a break. Thank you. You've been watching Spirit of Life. We'll be back after the break. Hello, welcome back to Spirit of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Walter Villa Gonzalo, Labour DLP, DLP candidate for Western Metropolitan Region. Welcome back, Walter. Thank you, Geraldine. You were talking about um, your move into politics and yes. how, how did you come about joining the DLP? It's, it was not something that I, I planned for. I just thought, you know, if it's in God's time, it will happen. A friend of mine uh, suggested that I speak to the DLP. He also called the uh, secretary of the DLP and asked if there, there was... Uh, if the DLP was looking for somebody as a candidate in the Western Metropolitan Region, and it's, they said the secretary said yes, they are. So set a meeting, and I had a discussion with the secretary, and then the interview, and I uh, was offered the the position of lead candidate for the Western Metropolitan Region. So I I know that it's not. It's almost impossible to get into labor uh, part, the labor party, the ALP, and uh, it was not something that I wanted to do in the first place. But I was also the major parties. It's not it's not easy to get into that un unless you've been involved with it and you're or, or you're a famous person or something. But the DLP, I looked at their policies and I thought I I, I align with this. I ex I agree with this with, with these policies. And if it's Something that um, if they're looking and you know, I am available, so 
we had a discussion and I accepted the, the offer. Oh, fantastic. Mm. And because you come with a lot of experience in um, social entrepreneurship and also you, you got many awards mm -hmm. for your work in the community. Yes, yeah, so uh, as I mentioned, I was more into the, the business side, meaning really creating local jobs for local residents, but also strong in the community side, empowering uh, the community, building the capacity. Because as a migrant, it's, it's, um, it's something that I really was sympathetic about. I was one of those that started the Australian Council for Multicultural Entrepreneurs, but also the Association of Skilled Migrants in Australia. So looking at how can Australia take advantage or uh, tap the, the expertise of the migrants coming in. But at the same time, also looking at how can migrants integrate better in mm. society, become more active citizens. But we cannot just look at migrants. We, can, we have to look at the whole community yes. and say, how can members of our community become more active citizens? So that's why it was not just into the migrant community, it was in the local community, getting yes. involved in community, uh, leading by example, being mm. part of the community and, 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 and showing how it can be done. Mm. So I was a social enterprise champion of Australia, but I've got lots of awards in, the, in being a volunteer. As I said, it's not, see, it's not about the awards that you do something. It's, it's community recognizing that you've done something there and it's good also because it's not just about me, it's about the members inspiring of my organization. People. Yeah, mm. inspiring people, getting people to be involved, but showing them that it can be done. Yes, I know when I was studying social work, we did a lot of research, uh, we read all about a lot of research and they said that those people who do volunteer work are a lot healthier and live longer. Yes. And, and it's a shame because many people see, I mean, I, I won't judge people as, oh, I've got to look after me, you know? Mm -hmm. And there's like, well, they say that uh, a lot of the ge younger generations have a lot of influence through the media about being comfortable. Yes. And, and I love what a, one of the Christian leaders said, I think it was Francis, but that we are not called for comfort, we are mm. called for greatness. Yeah. And, and, and you've shown through your life of service that it, it's brought um, so many communities together. You've helped communities get supported where the government hasn't been able to financially support organizations. You've helped people start social ent entrepreneurships. Yes, I enjoy doing this. I mm. really enjoy doing. Uh, right now, we're looking at uh, establishing a school for social entrepreneurs oh, wow. because uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, fund funding available there. We have the social procurement framework of the state government now, so that billions of dollars we're spending on infrastructure. Uh, a certain percentage, three percent of that, should be spent on social uh, through social enterprises or enterprises that are providing benefits to disadvantaged communities. Mm. But how do we do that if there's not enough social enterprises? Mm. How do we build the capacity of organizations to become social enterprises so that they can take advantage of that mm. uh, opportunity? So we need more of, the, more yes. of that, um, especially in the Western suburbs, we don't have. Yes. And um. so by being um, a member of parliament, you'll be able to strategically create that in different parts of the state, which will be a wonderful Thing to have yes because uh, there are a lot of um, I know in my area that a lot of the welfare organizations are doing so well but when the funding goes they get devastated because they've built communities yes, they've right. built good social workers and welfare workers and and then the clients the people in need say they're gone you That's know right. people they've depended on and some of them say well if they're not there for me I'll go on ice you know they, they go through this um, I've worked with people with, who had ice and heroin and all that, and mm. they say they feel abandoned, so they go back to their drugs, some of them, which is sad True. because they, you know, they, they still on that journey of healing, and then suddenly the funding drops, and then their workers disappear, and yes, this, you know, yes. it, it causes a lot of breakdown. Yeah. So it's important that uh, organizations continue to uh, advocate, continue to ask, or to continue to apply for grants. That is important. But at the same time, they need to prepare for some themselves to yeah. become more financially sustainable. Yes, and that's the things like the cafes and the exactly um, the 
companies that can yeah. get profits to give to the charities. Yes, but see, like jobs. I mean, as I've said, I was in the uh, Association of Skilled Migrants and uh, Australian Council for Multicultural Entrepreneurs. There's that um, thinking, I mean, of training. We're trained to become employees. Mm. That's the, you prepare for a job, mm. right? So whereas I'm saying to a lot of people who are asking me for help in finding a job, I said, continue looking for a job. Yes, but I need what to can pause we do to you. <laughs> That's so exciting, <laughs> but I need to pause you. Okay. You've been watching Spur of Life. We'll be back after the break. Hello, welcome back to Spur of Life. My name is Geraldine Lee, your host, and our guest is Walter Villa Gonzalo, Labour DLP candidate for Western Metropolitan Region. Welcome thank, back. Thank you again. Yes, you've done a lot for the community. Um, they, we do have an aging population. Have you got any thoughts about the aging pop population and, um, and what the government or the DLP party would like to do for for um, the age and other communities besides the, the money side, I suppose? Well, in Wyndham, for example, we've got a, you know, a fast growing, fast, we're one of the fastest growing cities in Australia and definitely in, in uh, Victoria. And it's not just about uh, the young babies or the babies that are born there. We have 12 babies born every day wow. in Wyndham. So fast growing there. But we also have a, a, an aging population. Mm. We've got lots of migrants coming in with their, uh, with their uh, parents and they're now aging. And uh, we know that there's not enough services there. But it's not just ha having not enough. It's even with those services that are already available, the aging uh, community or the, the senior community of the migrants are not aware. They're not taking advantage of these mm. services. Mm. So it's more about how do they, we educate them? How do we make them aware of those services that are existing? And then we need to know where are the gaps? How do we address that? Mm. Right? Like, uh, especially in the Western suburbs, we have a large migrant population. But where are the aged care facilities for migrants? Mm. We have lots of people from the non-Christian, you know, the Muslim and the, the Buddhist groups, for example. How sensitive are the services available for mm. them? I worked for uh, uh, one organization, AIDS and Disability Care. There were 60 clients that we mm. had, mm. and all are in the Western region. I see. But only one client was from the migrant community. Oh, I see. Why? What's mm. happening? It's mm. the migrant community that are not taking advantage of that funded I service. See. So we need more facilities for, for, for those uh, clients, right? Yes. Mm. It's great that you um, are seeing the gaps and, you, and you're raising awareness. Mm. And what, what about um, businesses um, and tax? Have you got some ideas about tax? Tax is, uh, well, if we're talking about federal tax, that would be a federal um, issue. Mm. Uh, Rates is something that councils are doing, mm. are, are responsible for, and even in Wyndham, there's a lot of people complaining about their, their rates, mm. uh, taxes. We have sales tax and things like that that are uh, mm. responsibilities of the state. These are something that, as a migrant, I know uh, paying the tax is something that we would like to reduce the amount of tax we're paying, but we can see the benefit that mm. these taxes are creating, right? So we need more infrastructure, we need more schools, we need more children's services, mm. as long as the tax is uh, still acceptable or things like that, but we can see that these are spent in the right way. Mm. And that, was, that is what is important in, in, in the community. And what's happening right now, for example, we see a lot of these new announcements of uh, the, the state government saying we are going to have all of this uh, train stations and underground tunnels and things like mm. that. But we see a lot of those from the eastern suburbs and we say, well, what's happening to the west? Mm. 
I see. What's happening mm. in the West? Is it because we are not a marginal mm. electorate that we don't get enough yes. or the same uh, support services, from the yeah. services from uh, than the, the Eastern side? Yes. That's an issue that is important to the yes. residents of the West. Yes, it's great that you're going to address and look into that. Yeah, and also with regards to jobs, it's, it's again, it's a, a lot of jobs are in the city. We need to bring more jobs in the the growth areas, also in the in the and more regional areas. And infrastructure too. Yes, what you that's say? right. That's what's happening in our area of Wyndham. The infrastructure is not catching up with the growth of the population. Mm. We, we have new subdivisions being developed and there's not enough roads, there's not, not enough bus services, there's not enough parking uh, hmm. And what about uh, hospitals? Hospitals, well, I, um, I hmm. broke my leg uh, doing some volunteer work um, hmm. three years ago. I had to be brought to Footscray because the service was not available in, wow. in Werribee. So, right? so we were diverted. We have, I've heard just recently we've got some families with uh, uh, a pregnant uh, mother was had to be had a miscarriage mm. because she was waiting for a, a service mm. there in Werribee Mercy Hospital. We could not, yes. we don't have the service. Yes, so it's great that you're so aware. And how, with all these problems, how, how does your faith, you know, how do you cope with all these, knowing all these problems and issues? Well, that's why I'm running for uh, parliament. I'd like to be able to do a bit mo more than what I could as a councillor. Yes. Right? So as I, I'm aware that these are not things that council can do, act on. We can yeah. only advocate. That's true. Right? So as a, as a, as a local councillor, I am saying to our local community and in the western suburbs, I'm a local mm. candidate. What affects them affects me, mm. affects my family. I know what the issues are. Right. I, I'd like to, I, I, I said to my uh, CEO, I said, look, you don't need to knock on my door if I, won, won the, if I win in the elections. I'm there to represent you. That's I'm right. there to represent the community. It's not the same as the major parties when they, mm -hmm. because it's a safe seat or whatever, they just bring in somebody from, from mm -hmm. New South Wales to, to yes. stand in the elections yes, there. Yes, it's wonderful that you, um, you know, because it's true, the, the state things are the things like the hospitals, the education, the roads. Mm -hmm. And unless you're a member of parliament in those areas, you can't influence that for the good of the community. Yes. Um, so, what um, if people want to help? You know, you come into power. What what kind of things would they need to do? Well, we we do need uh, volunteers to support us in during the election period. There's uh, maybe a need of 150 polling places that we need to have volunteers to give our how to vote cards. We need uh, more of our community members to pass on the word that we need, I mean, I'm there to represent the community as a local candidate. I'm there to represent the community to create more local jobs oh, for wow. local residents. Okay, so, so pass hopefully on, pass we can go on to the Labour DLP website and find out some of that yes. information. Yes, yes, that's right. Yes, unfortunately our time is up, but it's been very inspiring talking to you. Thank you. I gentlemen. wish you all the best and goodbye and God bless you. Thank you and God bless you too. You've been watching Spirit of Life. Stay tuned next week. Goodbye.